last time you were here, uh, we were days before the French presidential election. Yes, a lot of things happened in France for the last six months. That's right. We, as you know, we have, a new, <laughs> we have a new president, we have a new parliament, we have a new government, and very keen, very committed behind multilateralism, behind international action. So that, that's good news for development policy and that's good news for the agency it is, in charge of implementing it. And now that, that Macron has been in the presidency yeah. for six months, do we have a clearer idea of what his policies might be? What's important is that, I mean, he was elected uh, against uh, the National Front, you know, so some sort of far right, <laughs> right. party. And so he, he put international uh, action uh, at the core of his mandate. There's a positive loop between the transformation of, of France mm -hmm. and France being strong, stronger in Europe and in the world. And, and, and this is because France will be strong in Europe and the world that it will transform itself. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's a positive loop. And, um, and of course, uh, along this way, if he, he immediately uh, finds the development policy and, and, and Agence Française de Développement as a way uh, to explain our citizens that I mean, globalization is complex, mm -hmm. difficult, but, but you have capacity to, to act. You have capacity to, to connect with other people, other countries, uh, other civil societies, and, well, try to do something positive for, for us and, and for France. And just bring you to dollars and cents. What does it mean specifically uh, for your budget? He went to the UN General Assembly a few weeks ago, and he committed that uh, French ODA will pass from 0.38, which is as a percent too low, of the economy, as a percent of our, our national revenue, up to 0.55 uh, by 2022, uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the mandate. So that's a huge increase. It's uh, huge. the size of uh, the increase uh, on the defense budget. And we see the same evolution, the same balance uh, in Germany at mm -hmm. the same time. So you see continental Europe uh, increasing its... Um, its uh, capacity to to uh, act internationally and s finding some find some kind of balance between defense and development. One concern, just while we stay on the budget, I want to get to lots of other things. Please, but no, no. one concern people have about the budget increases in Europe is that some of that money will be counted as ODA, but go toward refugees or migration. Is that an issue in France or no? Well, we receive very small flows of refugees for now compared to. Uh, to our Nordic colleagues, mm -hmm. Sweden, or to Germany, of course, mm -hmm. one one million refugees yeah, sure. uh, when at the height of the crisis. So, but then you have rules. Huh? I mean, uh, you have uh, the DAC committee of uh, the OECD that set rules on, on how to account for ODA and especially for refugees. So you cannot count it all, but mm -hmm. part of it is eligible uh, to ODA. So that's. So we can talk much but more I, about that. I but don't I don't think that will be that much in France. Well, we don't know, but it's not much of an issue it's today. It's not right? really in the picture for now. I want to talk about another election because you're here in Washington. Just the day before tomorrow is going to be the meeting of the yes, International we, Development Finance Club, at which you are the only candidate to be the president of that club. So it looks like very knows? shortly <laughs> we will be calling you president of the International Development Finance Club. No, we yeah. No, we discussed it the last time mm -hmm. uh, I was there. Um, this is, a, this is a new setting, uh, six years old, uh, founded by a very large uh, institution, KFW in Germany, mm -hmm. AFD, uh, with Caisse des Dépôts et Consignations, mm -hmm. which, which is, which is our, the our, our national, national development, development bank. bank. Right. So somehow we form a group uh, that is the national, national and international development bank. You have CAF in Latin mm -hmm. America, you have BNDES. You have China Development Bank, you know, which, mm -hmm. which is the largest uh, public financial mm -hmm. institution in the world. You have DBSA in South Africa, the Moroccans, the Mexicans. So it's really a very, very new, fresh setting where on a pure equal footing basis between its members, mm -hmm. we can discuss international priorities. And, and if we want to succeed uh, in fighting against climate change, in reducing inequalities, if we need to mobilize these instruments. Because we cannot stay uh, between international organizations. I mean, the, the international organizations have a huge value. Sure. They know best practices. Like the they, World Bank. They set it. the standards. Uh, they pass the messages. But at the time, you need to, to pass these messages, these priorities, in our fabrics. Uh, and these institutions, they are very crucial because they, they, you know, they, they are participating to the COP. Mm -hmm. So they hear the climate signal. They mm -hmm. hear it loud and clear. And they are able then 
to explain their constituency, their territories, their politicians, their companies, that, that they have to change and they have to move fast um, because uh, the threat is, uh, is there and accelerating. So, yeah, so that's why climate was at, at the center of the agenda of the group, but now it will, it will expand. Right, tell us about that. So as you become president of this group, what will be the change in the focus on climate? It started as a, uh, it started as a club of CEOs. Basically, CEOs that were a bit, uh, they wanted to have a say on the international stage because they thought they had something to, to, to explain. Right. Um, and uh, now the idea is really to structure the club, the club more and to engage all our colleagues. So uh, we could have an IDFC of chief economists, I mean, providing an, a new analysis of the risks of mm. the way the, the international uh, economy is, is going. We can have an IDFC of uh, risk officers. We can have an IDFC of uh, um, experts in, on urban development. Mm -hmm. That's an issue that is so important uh, all over the world, especially in the South. So we will deploy the club open uh, the connections and try to be more, more, more active on the international stage. But this is an, it's kind of a voluntary club, it's, an, it's a loose alliance, right? There's not uh, formal agreements no, that sure. bind there's everyone a, there's to... A, there's a charter, okay. so, but uh, of course nothing is uh, mandatory mm -hmm. and it's on a pure uh, free, free basis. But oh, I mean, all these national development banks, they know that they have to, to learn from one another. Right and reinforce each other uh, through international cooperation. And there's a lot, uh, there, was a, there was a panel yesterday at the World Bank. I think the whole world is looking uh, because we know that this is a way to, j just to figure, I mean, when you look at uh, UN the UN system, mm -hmm. it's about $20 billion a year financing. Mm -hmm. When you look at MDBs at large, uh, it's about $200 billion uh, a year financing. When you look at IDFC, IDFC is more than six hundred billion dollar a year financing already, and, that's and an increasing, because, increasing arena. because the, of course these countries are are growing, mm -hmm. and so their institutions that it has, as, that is as they are the core of their system, mm. they are growing as well. So um, so if we want to mobilize, and they are of course very, they have a, a huge traction on on their financial markets. So beyond their core financing, six hundred billion you have this multiplier effect uh, in their own country. So we, we, have to, we have to use them, mobilize them. That's uh, as simple as that.